was launched. Good day everyone. Welcome to AF24 News Talks. Today I'm joined by a couple of experts to discuss the ruling of the tribunal that happened on September 6, 2023. Um, on my left we have Dr. Olabisi Dejifolutile. She's a director here at AF24 News. And to my right, we have Dr. Olaika, is an editor with AF24 News. Um, today, we just want to dissect some of the issues uh, pertaining to the judgment. For a little bit of background, the Presidential Elections Petition Court uh, ruled that the petitions brought forward by the Allied People's Movement the, P the People's Democratic Party and the Labour Party should be thrown out and President Bola Tinubu was returned or affirmed as the President of Nigeria. So, um, first of all, I want to start with uh, Dr. Ebi. Um What did you think about um, the entirety of the judgment? It was a 12-hour ruling from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. What are your thoughts on the judgment? <sighs> Well, I'm not a lawyer, but uh, <laughs> I think the judgment was boring. I'm speaking as a layman and as a journalist. If I were to be in that court, I saw a lot of pictures of even lawyers were sleeping. But let's come to the judgment itself. Honestly, as a Nigerian, I, I didn't expect that the judgment would go any other way. The reason is, uh, the, 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 the arguments that were made, some of them they said have been done, we have been dealt with before the issue of whether he attended the University of Chicago or Chicago University and so on and so forth. Then, apart from that, the um, arguments as they were laid, some of the evidences, issue of is it his qualification as a candidate or that the election was rigged? Because I would have expected that the argument would be based mostly on the fact that the INEC did not do what it promised it was going to do, and then bring all the votes cast, I mean, the IRF record. Are they re recorded? Are there ways that the um, records were falsified or changed? So if they didn't argue so much on that, for me, that would have been what the uh, PDP AP, uh, and LP and the APM lawyers will have based their argument on. Their argument of if a million votes were cast in a particular polling booth or state, and they find out that rather than count a million, they counted one point something million, then you prove over voting or you prove that the election was irregular there. But rather than argue on that, we went on arguing over whether he was uh, qualified, whether he had been convicted, and so on and so forth. They left so much argument on his eligibility rather than the issue of rigging. That, I think, was one of the areas where the the um the apple and is it apple and they call them they didn't argue their case very well if they had argued the, that in that uh, that angle more with more energy than trying to get his results maybe that would have helped them better than what they did from my own layman point of view Thank you very much for your comments, sir. I think we'll get back to the um, Justice Samani's um, comments on the INEC 
and the um, reports of overvoting as well, because I think it was also spoken of during the judgment. But first of all, I want to get some thoughts from Dr. Labisi. What did you think about the judgment? Well, for me, I think uh, it's, it was the time it took for the tribunal to pass that judgment. The sitting was rather long. I think uh, arguably it could be the longest uh, sitting in Nigeria's uh, history. Um, I think um, there were two cases close to that. That of a uh, treasonable felony against uh, Chief Obafemi Awolowo in 1962. That lasted for about eight hours. Another one that was close to that was the um, sitting or against uh, the former managing director of bank PHP, Atuche, which also lasted for about uh, 12 hours before he was convicted to six years imprisonment for embezzling customers' uh, money. I think this one started at about 9.30 and as of 10 p.m. they were still there and uh, we could see from the videos from that event that a lot of um, lawyers were even sleeping including the counsel for the parties, the major counsel for the parties. And uh, of course, I spoke to a lawyer friend who told me that usually, uh, that is usually the case when you want to read judgment because they are going to talk about every case and justify their decision on each of the case, if, on each of the points of reference, so to say. And in this particular case, uh, they said they consolidated three cases together. Uh, all the cases from all the political parties. So it was expected that it would, it would take that much time. However, I noticed something about uh, the old conversation during this period. To me, it sounded adversarial in that uh, the tribunal seemed to be the one, it seemed to be, I don't want to use the word uh, angry, that the opposition went to court to challenge the results of the 2023 presidential election. But it almost sounded like they were angry that uh, the petitioners went to court at all because all the language in at a point the they even said they brought everything as if you are asking us to go to the streets to look for evidence for you well i look i'm looking at it again i also felt that um, the tribunal was angry based on what had gone you know, what had happened on the social media where there were so many people like there were, there was a time that uh, we had about uh, all lies on the judiciary and all of that. Naturally, that could have made these uh, justices of the Federal Republic of Nigeria that are supposed to be people of high esteem. It's like questioning even their reasoning or judgments even before the day of judgment in the first instance but i feel also that um, they also have gone above that because um, from the way they reacted it's as if whatever you saw on social media was sponsored by the parties that went to the tribunal and we all know that we cannot establish that so for me that's i noticed and not just me what we also saw on the internet and not the reactions of people commentaries and the rest even from learned people uh, shows that a lot of people 
uh, noticed uh, this line of uh, uh, thoughts from the revered uh, judges or justices. So that is, but then as per the results of what was argued or not argued, I am not a lawyer. And uh, I also know that the fact that you take a case to court does not mean that you are going to win. You have to, you, you know, you don't, uh, judge, judgments are not based on sentiments. They are based on facts. And uh, it depends on how you are able to present or marshal your points. That is what... To work against that point, um, do you think that the judiciary in any way were influenced by the uh, the conduct of how the parties put together their arguments because um, looking at um, some of the observations or some of the judgments made um, we, we we saw that about 10 out of 13 witnesses were struck out because they failed to be presented within the stipulated time and we also saw another instance of um, the judiciary or the judges claiming that the um, conduct of the parties in putting together their case could have also influenced the reaction of the judges. Well, it is possible, but at the same time too, I am not going to just uh, sit here and uh, exonerate... Well, I'm not exonerating anybody. I am also not going to sit here and accuse the appellants of not being able to bring their case or prove their case very well because we all know that there are processes. I remember that uh, initially um, these parties, when they alleged over voting, they, are, they, they, they went to court asking the court to compel INEC not to erase the evidence on the IREF portal, right? Which was what they wanted to rely on. They first went to INEC to, to, get, this, uh, to get this evidence. INEC said it could not. And at a point, and you know, it's also time, there is a time limit to when they, could, when they should put all these things together. And at a point, I next said, well, we want to do a governorship election. And we need to erase what, whatever we have on our portal in order to be able to uh, use the portal for the governorship election. And these <laughs> political parties that went to court raised an alarm that this is the evidence that we are relying on. How are we sure that we are going to get it? I neck assured them and said, no, you are going to get it and all of that. And they went ahead and did whatever they wanted to do. But after that, this political party said, okay, we need the evidence. And I next said, no, we have cleared it off. We don't have it again. Do you understand? So, but we cannot blame the judges for whatever decision they took, but it might not be based on the fact that the, these political parties, the appellants, do not want to prove their case. But Nigerian factor entered into it, which made it impossible for them to be able to present. You know, it, it, this thing is a game. You have to, it's a political game. If you are not, and they know that in court, you have to, the judges will just base their judgment on evidence. And once you can prevent your opponents for, from presenting the required evidence that will make them to secure positive judgment, then the judges will not uh, take decisions based on your assumption. They need facts. That's why, you know, some people will tell you that they cannot be lawyers. Because the lawyer will know what is right like this. But the person that does the wrong, if his lawyer is able to prove it beyond reasonable doubt, that person gets it. So, 
I think uh, the tribunal does not have to show anger. You understand? It would be good to, it could have been good if they just limited their commentaries to the fact that, well, based on the evidence that is available to us, we cannot, you have not been able to prove that uh, there is overrigging or things like that, but not to think that uh, you have wasted our time. Because whoever is, uh, is not satisfied with a process has the right to go to court. That is why the tribunals are there. So they shouldn't act as opposition to the political parties. They are part of the electoral system to ensure that everybody, that the electoral system works well for all Nigerians. All right. Um, we spoke a little bit about the um, voting, which I was going to go back to. And uh, we spoke a little bit about INEC as well. And uh, one of the things that um, the judgment uh, put forward is that the Electoral Act, which was uh, signed into law in 2022, made no provision for electronic transmission of results. Judgment said that although INEC came forward to say uh, we're going to transmit results electronically for the 2023 election and all upcoming elections, um, it was not mandated to do so. And that in the law, it was stipulated that it was to the discretion of the body itself, of the electoral body. So I just want to ask um, Dr. Yebile, do you think that such a response was sufficient? Well, um, you know, saying that does not uh, portray them in a good way because it is not everything that will be stated in the constitution or in the electoral law. Electoral law will not say, okay, you must uh, do it electronically or manually. The electoral law, will, all the electoral law will likely say, or should say, is that the result must be made ready at appointed time. So whether it is electronic or manual, they, it doesn't have to be stated in the electoral law. But what I see there is that in the judgment, the, ju the justices did not even have any word of caution or censor for the electoral body. So it's like what the electoral body did is perfect, which we all know is not. So the INEC itself should have been sanctioned or some, uh, some um, comments should have been made about INEC. Because INEC, without anybody's prompting, promised heaven and earth that we are going to put this thing on IREP. Billions of naira was spent to make sure that everything go, went well. But it didn't go well. So now, it's just like we are having in the uh, oil industry. You talk about uh, people who, who made a lot of money from uh, subsidy. They go unpunished. INEC also failed to uh, fulfill his own promise and all the things that he has said. I know what, even if you are not going to punish Aine, at least something must be said about Aine. But the judges didn't find it appropriate to say one or two words about the way Aine is afraid to live by its own word. Because Aine made us to understand that this is what they are going to do and they promised in, in fact, before the election, there was nowhere the INEC chairman went that he didn't make that promise. In Nigeria, abroad, in Chatham House, in everywhere, he made that promise. But he failed flatly. So, the judges didn't see, uh, the justices didn't say anything wrong in that. They didn't say anything about that. I think that was also unfair because if INEC failed on his own part, I need to should be punished or should, something should be said about it. So I think uh, they didn't uh, 
they were not as harsh on INEC as they were on the parties and their uh, lawyers. Speaking on that point, what do you think their reaction to, to this should be? Do you agree that this party should be seeking uh, the Supreme Court to get a, a more, a, 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 another try? Or do you think that that is also something that is... Well, you see, asking them not to go to the Supreme Court would seem as if one has agreed without the appeal for tribunal has said. But asking them also to go is to uh, say as if one does not agree. I'm, I like to be very realistic. And as I said earlier on, I don't think anything will come out of it. Because now at the Supreme Court, you are not allowed to present new evidence. The Supreme Court will now look at what you have presented before. And that is what they are going to uh, and ask and look at what the appeal court has said. Or uh, whether there was a procedural error in the appeal court or whatever. So I don't think that they are going to get anything new. But uh, as a lawyer friend said, when I said they shouldn't go to the Supreme Court, he said, ah, what do you mean? You don't want lawyer to chop. So... <laughs> And since they get their money, million, million. So, I'm sure they will go to the Supreme Court. I'm not uh, a seer, but I don't think anything will come out of it. Honestly. And what we will say um, should be the... Uh, because from what we've discussed today, it seems like, and also we've been, you know, uh, monitoring the reaction of Nigerians as well. Uh, I would say that uh, from our observation, it seems like there's a little bit of uh, disillusion, um, disillusionment, or should I say, people are no, no longer putting their faith in the judiciary or thinking that that seems to be a valid form of recourse or, or a valid means to pursue justice. So I just want to ask you, Dr. Labisi, uh, what sort of precedent do you think that this um, proceeding sets and what what are your fears about um, the direction in which people are thinking it may not necessarily be so that maybe there was any um, uh, misjudgment but what do you what precedence do you think this mistrust causes for Nigerians well I think um Honestly, I would have preferred if the appeal court, the tribunal, focused on the facts of the matter. And if it did not show any emotion while delivering that judgment. Because that's an uh, outburst of emotions and a way of can could have been misrepresented as the judiciary being, being bought that you know some people just feel that the judiciary was bought and because of that there is no faith in the judiciary because it acted as if it was working for the Candidates that was taken to court. I spoke about that earlier on. So for me, I think that has really taken us backward. Yes. Uh, we, I know that uh, we have issues with the judiciary and uh, with all organs of government, really, in this country. But that's... Uh, brazen opposition or anger against appellant. I don't think I've seen something like that in, the polit in political matters before this particular judgment. So, and also the fact that, uh, like uh, Dr. Oyegbele mentioned, the fact that uh, the tribunal had no word of caution for 
high neck despite his assurance that it was going to transmit results electronically also gives people the impression that oh what does this mean does it mean that the, the, the judiciary has really lost it if it had cautioned INEC, for example, I think uh, it doesn't, that caution to me couldn't have affected the final judgment at the end of the day because really it will still be based on evidence. And if the evidence is not there, there is nothing. The tribunal cannot manufacture evidence as the justices rightly stated. But it could have at least made Nigerians know that this uh, judiciary, because we have the legislative arm of government, we have the judiciary, and we have the executive, they are supposed to act as checks and balances to avoid dictatorship. I think Nigerians will have been able to say, oh, fine. Because the implication of making it look like INEC didn't do anything wrong is that this electoral body in future can do worse things. And if we have now ruled that even transmitting results electronically is not compulsory, then we are back to the days of ballot box snatching. And that is what the electoral law, for example, was supposed to correct or prevent. So it means that, okay, it doesn't really matter. The end justifies the means. Before, when they were talking about electronic transmission of results, the assurance was, even if you like, go and snatch ballot box. You are not going to get any benefits from it. Right? But now they are saying that it's not necessary. So we are back, maybe 30 years backward, in our electoral process. I remember, is it not in the 90s that they do snatching of ballots, mm -hmm. that they will carry acts and all of the cutlass? Are we, is that what we are going back to? Because we can't afford to go back to the old system. Even the electro electronic transmission of results, there are other things about AI that can even alter or influence even the results. <laughs> do you get it? But let's be dealing with such, not going backward. So if Nigerians don't have trust in the judiciary, based on what we saw on September 5th, we cannot really blame them. But my point is that we should keep on having faith in our processes and uh, just give the judiciary the benefit of the doubt. Because some people are even saying, why bother to go to the Supreme Court? <laughs> you know, that is what, you know what will be the outcome of the Supreme Court. Why do you want to go there but then we need to follow the process for me it's not about winning or not winning it's about a process exhausting the process that is available to any political party it is within their rights to exhaust it is their money how i wish i'm one of the learned uh, people now so that me too i can even do some and <laughs> get some pay but unfortunately i'm not learned i'm just a bloody journalist <laughs> um, so thank you for joining us um, dr labisi and dr Uyebile. um and thank you for joining us as viewers um, let us know your thoughts and your own comments about the ruling that happened last week and if you think that everything um, that we've discussed today is relevant to uh, the conversation and also don't forget to like and subscribe uh, to this channel thank you very much and have a lovely day